Today on Exploring Scotland's History we are at Great Castle to learn of its history and somewhat of its myth. Welcome to Exploring Scotland's History. not a ranter, but this gets my goat. This ancient castle is protected as a monument of national importance, right? And then we're just going to nip in the door and I'm going to lose my... A monument of national importance and some absolute pillock has set a fire right in the middle of the castle. <laughs> Built a nice fire in the middle of the castle. I've had a big run. The manor of Rate was originally owned by the Macintoshes, and they presume it was them who built the first structure on this site. The land is listed on an 1165 charter that William the Lion gave the lands to one Shaw Macintosh. He would later serve as Crown Constable. For Inverness Castle. So quite powerful I would imagine. Duncan's grandson was an only child when his father died so the lands passed to the Cumming family, Norman Knights, and they took the name Durate. sandstone while weathered it's very tactile and really quite beautiful in the remains of the windows it was Gervais Durant who built this beautiful structure that we see today Originally, the Hall House would have been surrounded by a barmkin. Now, a barmkin is a Scottish word for a sort of a defensive enclosure. It would defend, I suppose, a small attack, but a sustained attack. It, it really wouldn't stand up to it. It's also worth pointing out that the Durant family had a kinship with John Common, who was one of the claimants of the Scottish throne. They were staunch supporters of Edward I during the first Scottish War of Independence. In fact, Gervais and Andrew went to Berwick upon Tweed and signed their fealty to the King. That was in 1292. They obviously opposed the uprisings from the likes of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce as well. Despite various attempts by the Macintoshes to get Red Castle back, the Cummings held it and it would eventually come to head in 1442. The Cummings conspired the murder. They invited the Macintoshes over to settle differences. Obviously they had other plans. Their plans pretty much entailed slaughtering the Macintoshes once they would give up their arms in order to have their dinner and discuss differences. Though the Macintoshes were alerted of the treachery, they were alerted of the treachery by one of the Cummings daughters. Clearly the Macintoshes knew what was going to happen so instead of the Cummings ambushing them the tables were turned and the Macintoshes ambushed them. The chief of Cumming headed up the stairs in the castle here to try and escape the slaughter. There he met the girl who had betrayed their clan but let the Macintoshes know what was going to happen. Apparently she attempted to escape through a window and he cut her hands off in the process. 
So she fell to her death with no hands and apparently she still haunts here. At least she hadn't haunted here and sorted out those clowns that lit the fire. Ugh. This is the castle and I am suspecting that the remains of this wall are the remains of the barmkin that we were discussing earlier. There are rumours, traditional tales, that the Butcher Cumberland stayed here on his way to Culloden, but given that there would have been much more accommodation of his standard in Nairn, I'm thinking it's quite unlikely. It is a stunning, stunning piece. We came here a few years ago and I think this is one of my favourite castles, but there's definitely quite a choice of them. It's a gorgeous castle. Obviously we have defensive arrow slots on the side of the tower. Martin's inside the tower doing a bit of filming. Here, despite the weathering, you can see where the window frames would have been attached. I'm not sure how well we'll do in the dark of this little tower, but it is thought that this would have been a little private chapel for the Cummings or Macintoshes or whoever had it that week. It really is gorgeous. The ceiling is quite impressive as well. How it has possibly stood up to all the years of weather. This really has my favourite quite a commanding view and it's sort of quite high up and can see for quite a number of miles. Fun fact, Bonnie Raitt, the American blues singer-songwriter, is a descendant of the Durates. She visited the castle remains in 1990. So that was Wraith Castle. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you to everyone thus far who supported the channel through the coffee page. Links to that and other social media are below. Until next time, thank you for watching Exploring Scotland's History.